Hello, I'm Atu Jamir and you're watching Hornbill TV Spy Mid 9. Now, news and details. The Court of District and Session Judge Peck has convicted one Kunung Oi Medio to 20 years rigorous imprisonment and fine of rupees 5,000 for commission of rape and aggravated sexual assault upon victim girl child under Chozoba in Peck. The judgment was pronounced by Court of Special Judge Pokso Act Peck Mizavilu T. Therie on July 16. In the judgment, the Special Judge Pokso held that all the evidences lead to only one conclusion that the accused did commit rape and aggravated penetrative sexual assault on the eight-year-old girl child victim who is known to him. Accused evidently shows his premeditated mind to take the victim on a pretext of buying eatables and washing the van and commit the evil act of rape and aggravated penetrative sexual assault in broad daylight. Further, the accused was also found guilty for committing sexual assault and sexual harassment upon the girl child victim by outraging her, her modesty. While pronouncing the sentence, the special judge held that it was therefore expected from the accused, who is a father figure to the victim girl child, that she should have been treated with love and care as she is staying in her aunt's house for study purpose. Instead, the accused committed an unforgivable act of committing rape and aggravated penetrative sexual assault on her. The case was investigated by I.O. UBI Lucy Dongle, O.C. Woman P.S. Peck and Samuel Ritze, Special Public Prosecutor Pokso Act Peck led the prosecution. The Department of Health and Family Welfare today reviewed the COVID-19 situation in Nagaland. Addressing press conference today at Director of Health and Family Welfare, Principal Director Dr. K. K. Vikato Kinimi said that the department is closely monitoring the rise in case of COVID-19 in the states where there has been a recent spike. He said that as per available data, the rise in cases have not been reflected in rise of hospital admissions and there is sustained low incidence level of mild clinicals severity and very low rates of hospitalization. He also informed that no new variant has been detected in the state. It has been proved that in our country due to successful in vaccination, now we are better than other countries. So I would like to send message that all the Naga citizens who have not been vaccinated, please accept the vaccination so that we'll be protected from COVID-19 because it proves that those who have taken vaccination are protected. That I want to add it to. As for available data, the rise in cases have not been reflected in the rise of hospital admission in our state. And also, there is a sustained low incidence level of mild clinical severity and very low rates of hospitalization due to various factors such as enhanced surveillance, focus on case, ma case management, and high vaccination coverage. The general public is encouraged to get vaccinated and also take precaution dose. <coughs> the strategy for surveillance will focus on early detection, isolation, testing, time management of suspected and confirmed cases, detect and contain outbreaks, new of COVID-19 variants. State Nodal Officer IDSP Dr. Nian said that the recent spike in five states, which are contributing more than 80% of cases, has low clinical severity of the cases so far and very low rate of hospitalization. Stating that pandemic is not yet over, he urged the public to continue adhering to COVID-appropriate behavior. Our state, the uptake of vaccination is very less and very slow. Since we have uh, initiated the COVID vaccination 2021, January 16, till today our vaccination is in the progress. As per the ministry guideline, we have uh, initiated house-to-house camping, hard card dasta for two months. So all the activities 
vaccination progresses, though it is slow, it is ongoing. So far, our adult population, 18 years and above, we have covered more than 58 percent, and our children, 15 to 17 years, age group is 49 percent. Then, 12 to 14 years, age group, there's a very slow vaccination percentage coverage is still very less. State Immunization Officer Dr. Ritu Thir also informed that vaccination status in the state is very less and slow. He informed that so far the vaccination coverage for the adults 18 years and above is more than 58% children at the age group of 15 to 17 years is 49% and 12 to 14 years are still less and for which he also said that the department is disseminating information to the parents to get vaccinated to improve in the coverage. One note of precaution that we want to also tell our public is that one should not take COVID-19 lightly because we still have a large chunk of population who are susceptible, especially those people who are immunocompromised, those people who have comorbid conditions like BP, diabetes. So these are the vulnerable population. These are the vulnerable population and uh, the outcome in such groups can, can also have a disastrous outcome. That is number one. Number two is, as we all know, reinfection is a possibility. With this Omicron variant, reinfection is a possibility in the sense one can be reinfected with the same variant or with the different variants of the Omicron variant. The only government higher secondary school in Aboy Mon district has been struggling to accommodate new students. In a press statement, the Aboy Area Students Union stated that every year after declaration of the high school leaving certificate results, the schools face seats problem in class 11 as it is the only government higher secondary school in the area. Despite several reminders on the issue to the state government, the union lamented that the government turned deaf ears to their appeals. Therefore, with no other option, the NGOs of Aboy every year construct temporary class, desks and benches for students. The union also informed that more than 340 students have been applied for admission to class 11 and 73 students were, are studying in class 12. As school is facing a commutation problem, this year also the students Union of Aboy Town, Chen area and Longqing area are going to construct three classrooms, desks and benches for class 11 students at GHSS Aboy. The AASU appealed to the Education Department to look into the matter and construct three additional classrooms and appoint lecturers to both class 11 and 12. The Musicians Guild Award 2022 and the 7th World Music Day is all set to take place on June 18 and June 21st, respectively. This was announced at a press conference held today at the Heritage Old DC Banglo, Kohima. Advisor of Musicians Guild, Jan Fokikon, said that the second Musicians Guild Award will be held at the Regional Center of Excellence for Music and Performing Arts, Jotsoma, in Kohima. He said that the idea is to establish an institution in the state which recognizes artistry of high standards and to acknowledge artists who write and compose original songs. Yan Fo informed that they have received 235 entries from all Northeast states and there will be 11 categories for the awards. We created people to start competing not just amongst ourselves here in Nagaland, but we want them to compete at the Northeast level. We want them to compete at the national level. And with this vision, our team, we decided to have this competition at the Northeast level. And we started this competition called MG, the Musicians Guild Music Awards. Last year we had it online, this year we'll have it an actual awards uh, and with this idea we want to make Nagaland a truly creative hub in the region and in the country because we have so many creative people among the young people we know so many talented musicians creative people so we want really want to encourage all the young people to start becoming you know producing original content not just singing covers uh, that was the basic idea
Uh, we opened this competition to all northeastern states and we received 235 entries from all states, of course. Uh, we have 11 categories. Uh, it's all written there, but just for your information, we have like best rock artists, we all love rock. Best rap and hip hop, all the new kids these days listen to a lot of rap and hip hop. Best electronic music, best pop solo, best pop duo, best folk fusion. Pretty much, first of all, I and my colleagues, the musician skills, would like to extend our gratitude. Thank you, our media fraternity, for responding positively and making it here. Thank you also very much for always being there. Uh, further on, I will be kind to young folk yeah. and many future. President Musicians Guild Mele Pucho informed that the 7th World Music Day will be celebrated on June 21st at the Heritage All DC Bangalore in Kohima. He said that the World Music Day is the only time where all the musicians come under one umbrella. Uh, world Music Day celebration that we organize every year here in the Heritage. Uh, this is our 7th World Music Day celebration. Ever since 2011, you know, we have been organizing you know, this concert, uh, annual concert every year to celebrate World Music Day. Our team, the Musicians Guild, you know, why we celebrate World Music Day is, you know, because we believe, you know, it is a day for all the musicians. Earlier, you know, we don't celebrate this. But since 2011, we have started organizing this concert. And I think this concert has been one of the most successful concerts, besides the Hornbill, you know, this is one of the most successful concerts, you know, that is happening in Nagaland as well. We can very proudly say that, because, you know, every year we bring the best musicians, you know, to, to treat our fans. And we believe, you know, that this World Music Day is like a birthday for all the musicians. It's our day, it's our birthday. So what we do is like, you know, we bring all the best musicians, you know, from not just from Nagaland, but even from Northeast, you know, to give a treat, you know, to our, to, to, to our fans, you know. They give a treat to their own fans, you know. That's where, uh, this is the only time, you know, where all the musicians can come together, you know, under one umbrella. A high-level committee headed by the Union Home Minister Amit Shah has approved to provide additional central assistance to Nagaland and Rajasthan under the National Disaster Response Fund. The two states will be given the funds for a drought that occurred during 2021 to 2022. Of the total rupees 1043.23 crore approved, Rajasthan will be receiving rupees 1003.95 crore, while Nagaland will get rupees 39.28 crore. The assistance is over and above the funds released by the centre to the states in the SDRF, already placed at the disposal of the states. During financial year 2021 to 2022, the central government has released Rs. 17,747.20 crore to 28 states in their STRF and Rs. 7,342.30 crore to 11 states from the NDRF. Nagaland State Disaster Management Authority had declared a moderate drought from September 2021 to March 2022 in the entire state. Nagaland's first woman elected as Member of Parliament to Rajya Sabha and Chief of Nagaland PJP Mahila Morcha as Pangyong Konyak represented India at the 2 day 8 IPO Global Conference of Young Parliamentarian in Egypt. She, along with two other young Lok Sabha MPs from India, shared their thoughts on the young MPs for climate action. Pangyong shared her thoughts on environment protection where she also highlighted the efforts of organizations like the Poem Baptist Christian Association which has been heading a movement of environment protection for the past five years. I took the opportunity to present India's stand on tackling climate change as envisioned by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, she said. Nationally determined contributions submitted to the UNFCCC. Prime Minister of India has already presented to the world a five-fold climate action plan called Panchamrit at the COP26 held last year that aims at taking non-fossil energy capacity of the country to 500 gigawatt by 2050 and other such ambitious, significant ambitious targets. For the youth today, social media is the most active platform and in our efforts to tackle climate change, social media can act as a great enabler and if it is and a game changer, if it is used in the right 
Meghalaya administration is on alert across the state following the incessant rain across northeastern states, which led to several landslides on one of the crucial lifelines, National Highway 6 under the Lamchnong police station under East Jaintia Hills. The disruption in NH6 Gohati Silcha route via Meghalaya's Jaintia Hills will also cause inconvenience to states like Mizoram and Tripura along with Barak Valley in southern Assam. Visuals of a truck along with a car stuck in a pit of the a road caved in has surfaced on social media. No casualties were reported in the incident. The DC has advised avoiding unnecessary travel along the search. More landslides were reported near Thirongrian Bridge on Jowai Amalram Road. In West Jaintia Hill District, traffic has been halted and clearing is in progress, said local police. Meanwhile, Meghalaya Chief Minister Konrad K. Sangma held a review meeting today with the Deputy Commissioners of all districts and concerned departments to assess the prevalent situation across the state and take stock of damages caused due to incessant rains. Uh, last uh, uh, night and uh, early morning, because of heavy rainfall in different parts of the state, especially in uh, East Jente Hills uh, district, certain uh, very important uh, road connections um, have been damaged quite severely. Uh, I had taken a review meeting uh, on video conferencing with all the respective deputy commissioners and officials from the different districts, as well as uh, honorable ministers had joined. And uh, post the meeting, we have decided to form um, four regional committees to be headed by respective ministers. The Jente Hills, which will take care of East and uh, West Jente Hills, uh, Mr. Lakman Rumbui, who is the Honorable Home Minister, along with the Revenue Minister, Mr. Kermen Shilla, and other uh, leaders from the local uh, districts, as well as the Deputy Commissioners will be members. And I've asked them to closely monitor the situation in the next 24 hours to 48 hours in the district, and to ensure that steps are taken so that the movement of vehicles can start at the earliest, especially the uh, essential supplies that are required for not just those districts, but for the neighboring states also. Apart from that, uh, we have formed a committee for uh, Riboy and for East Khasi Hills. And uh, we have asked our Honorable Deputy Chief Minister, Mr. Preston Tinsong, along with other leaders and other um, uh, district administration officials and departments the Indian Meteorological Department Shillong has issued a red alert for southwest Kasi Hills, East Kasi Hills, West Jaintia and East Jaintia Hills district. Two children aged 8 and 11 were crushed to death due to a landslide as Assam continues to battle heavy rains. The flood situation took a turn for worse, said officials. Both of them died when a house collapsed in Azad Nagar area of Golpara district, raising the toll due to flood and landslide in Assam to 44. The two deceased were identified as Hussein Ali, who is 11 years old, and Asma Khatun, 8. In Gohati, three persons suffered injuries in Noon Mati area as multiple landslides were reported across the city during the day. In several areas, including Joypur in Garguli area, Bonda Colony, South Sarania, Amyapur in Gita Nagar, and 12 Mile debris pileups led to road blockades. Work to clear the road leading to Nizarpar, where stands Parad Ratna, Dr. Pupain Hazarika's residence was underway, the official stated. Torrential rain has also damaged two electric poles near Raj Pavan. Here, at least 18 districts in the state are still experiencing heavy showers, which in duration of fresh areas reported from Kamrut Metro, Kamrut Nalbari and Parbeta. Nearly 75,000 people have been affected by floods in the 18 districts. Water level in River Bhamaputra and its tributaries are on the rise while River Manas was flowing above the danger mark in some places. That's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.